guys. Happy Monday, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about um, pushing the emotion. If you felt that you're focused on producing an emotion when you're acting, when you're auditioning. Oh no, it's working. All right. Okay, let's get going. So, um, yeah, you might have caught yourself, um, you know, feeling like you need to produce an emotion. Um, especially if it's a big one, especially if it's like a dense, you know, sadness or anger or even happiness or fear, you may feel like, like you're focused on producing the emotion, like you're not really being your character, you're not really, you know, going through what they're going through, but you're really as an actor focused on producing. And so that may feel a little yucky, right? I'm hearing a lot of actors talk about that when they come in our community, like you feel that there's a should, like you have to produce that. And it feels a little bit like you're being locked up in an obligation, like there's an authority, like you can't be free, like you can't actually be authentic and be unique and do what you want. But you're feeling like, well, it's written. I have no choice if it says that the character is angry or if it's this type of character. I have to do that. And so you're feeling like you're being trapped. You're being forced. Um, it's There's a lot of effort. And then it becomes not fun, right? Because you're just there and you have to be a puppet. Like you have to do what you're told by the text or by the director. You're feeling forced into something that you haven't necessarily chosen as an artist so it feels inauthentic it feels not free and when you're finding yourself in that situation then i hear a lot of actors ask about you know like why is it why is it not fun when i'm acting why is it that i'm feeling like it's painful it's yucky it's it's not fulfilling and i'm feeling drained and i have to push and therefore i'm not natural therefore i'm not myself therefore i'm not booking or i'm not really getting um, to the fulfillment that I want to feel and I'm not really impacting the audience because I'm efforting through it I'm I'm pushing through it. And so it's not yeah, it's not alive. It's not present, right? And so I get it that You can feel a little bit stuck in between well I've been hired to do this character and this character is going through that and he's he is sad or he is angry And so I have to produce right. I understand that there's this obligation that you feel is um, really on top of your shoulders and that you can't just do whatever you want. You can't just do whatever you want. You just have to produce and you feel locked up and you feel that you're looping in there. And, and even though you're looping in there, you also know that's not the way that works for you to be fulfilled and for you to impact your audience. And yet again, you're locked into, well, it says that I have to, so I should. So I'm fucked basically. Right? So I totally get the frustration. I totally get that. Uh, you know, we see a lot of actors, whether they're beginner, beginners or whether they're actors who have been acting for a very long time and a lot on very big projects, they often say, just not like a debutante issue, they often say, like, it's so painful. It's, I have to push and I have to effort so hard and I want acting to be fun again, right? I often hear that also from people who have been child actors who become adult actors who got a lot of training, a lot of methods and a lot of techniques and then feel like they are forced to using methods and techniques. They're forced to produce the emotion and they get stuck in that loop of not being free, not being authentic, not being themselves, not being unique, right? So I totally get that, um, that the, 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 there's a paradox of wanting to do a good job and yet when you're trying to do a good job, you feel stuck. So you may have tried a lot of classes. You may have felt like, oh my God, this is not the right method or not the right technique or not the right acting teacher. So I'm going to try another one just to make sure that it's not so hard, that I don't have to push so hard. And then I can just, you know, have the emotion that is requested, have the, the thing that is needed in the scene. And so I can be there right away without having to push. So you might have tried a lot of that. I see a lot of people who have tried everything internationally, like the best coaches or the best teachers or whatever, and come back to the same starting block where they're like, I don't feel like I'm myself. I don't feel authentic. I don't feel free. I don't feel like I can uniquely be myself as an artist. I just feel pushed and I feel forced and I 
don't like it. I don't like that feeling. It's not, it's the opposite of what you're looking for as an artist, right? As an artist, you're wanting to fully express yourself in the way that only you can express yourself. So feeling blocked and stuck and forced into something that is not necessarily or specifically what you, your impulses or your instinct would have gotten you into can feel like a big dilemma and can feel like suffering. So what's really happening actually is is not the fact that you that there is an authority and that you should respect it that the text is saying what you need to do and that you need to do it that is not what the problem is what the problem is is that because of your conditioning and I'll explain what I mean when I say conditioning you're actually trying to please the writing the director the casting director before even getting into who you truly are in the moment. You're trying to please before even being present in your instrument. You're trying to satisfy external needs before even being able to connect with your needs. So you're trying to, I'm gonna say it still another way, you're trying to connect with what they want before actually even being able to connect with where you're at or what you want with this character. And the reason you're doing that is because you have been trained, educated, wired, conditioned to always please external needs and people before checking in with your own. So if you look at your education with your parents, and I'm not making your parents wrong, but this is just the culture that we're raised in, and hopefully now it's changing little by little. But if you look at the way that you were raised, you were raised by being told what to feel. Like when you were angry, you were being told not to be angry. When you were crying, you were being told to shh, don't cry. Everything is okay. When you were being super happy, you were being told to turn it down a little bit, right? So when you were being afraid, you were being told to not be afraid. So you have been told to feel a certain type of emotion since you were born that were not yours. Every time you felt an emotion, you were told to adjust to what other people needed. And those other people were very relevant in your childhood. Those other people were your parents and your survival depended on your parents when you were little. When you were a newborn, your survival literally depended on the care they gave you. And so very smartly so, what you did was you became very good at adjusting your emotions in terms of what they seem to want from you so that they would continue to take good care of you and your survival needs, right? And then you go to school and at school, the teachers are telling you how to behave and your social needs depend on that. Your belonging depends on that. You making friends, you being validated depends on you respecting the rules. So at school, you're being told to sit down, to not move, to be quiet, to eat when you're told, to pee when you're told, to learn what you're told. You're not encouraged to be yourself, to feel what you feel, to think what you think, to move when you want to, to actually honor your truth and your freedom in the moment. You're being told to do the exact opposite, right? You're being told to behave, to be like others, to be a good person, to do it right. All of those concepts have nothing to do with your truth and with your freedom. But because your belonging depends on it, because your uh, validation and your social connections depend on it, you drink the Kool-Aid and you respect and you obey so that you won't be humiliated, so you won't be shamed, so you won't be rejected, you'll be accepted and validated and you'll belong in your society, right? And then you become an adult and there's the community and the rest of the culture, which works the same way. You have to be a good person. You have to do things right. If not, you're a bad person and there's something wrong with you and no one wants that because then there's rejection. Then there's really, you're not good enough and you're unworthy and you're unworthy of love, of safety, of belonging, of all of those important needs that we all have. So if I can make a summary of what I just did, you have been raised to make sure that you would always first check in with outside. Always first check what other people need and please them. So your survival's in check, so your belongings in check, so your validation's in check, so your love is in check. So 
You have been trained to be great at pleasing before being present. Right? Let me say that again. You have been trained very successfully so to be great at pleasing. Antennas that have been trained to please, train, look at it, and try to please. Try to do what's in the text. Try to force and produce what the director might, might want, what the text might want. And you're not even you're given, giving yourself the opportunity or the possibility to actually go, oh, where am I at about this? How do I feel about this? What is my perception of this as an artist, as a human being? How do I see and perceive the situation, this character that I'm becoming and these circumstances in my unique way? You don't do that because your tubes, your plumbing, your architecture has been trained to do the opposite. Your plumbing, your architecture has been built, wide, programmed, and and constructed to not listen to what's happening here but to first figure out what people want of you continuing to please other people before you get present. And as an artist, that is a recipe for a disaster, right? Because inevitably you will feel just focused on producing the emotion, which is what you think other people want of you, except that the missing element in here is that it's art and people are not actually wanting anything specific out of you. Your responsibility as an actor is to bring life to the project to bring your specific and unique perception of life inside of these circumstances. And so that is what people are hunting for. That is what people are paying for. And that is what people are turning on their TV station for. TV station is probably a word that doesn't even exist. But so that is what you're supposed to do is to actually check in with yourself and be present. So you will be able to do that because your architecture has been built for the opposite. Your architecture, your plumbing has been built to please what's in the text, what the authority says before you get present. And what the nature of your work wants is actually for you to show up in your unique way, for you to be present and to not worry about what pleases other people, but to come up with something that's more alive, bigger, more interesting, not bigger in terms of volume, but more specific, more unique, more human than the word that is written on the page. The word that is written on the page is the work of the writer and that's done, that's closed, they're done. Your work as an actor is to come in and bring your specific take on life in that moment. So you need to be present for that. So for that, you need to unwire everything, everything, that you have learned to do, which is to please others. You need to undo that. If you don't undo that, inevitably your tubes are still going there. Your plumbing is still going there. Your architecture is still built for that. So even if you don't wanna go into the pleasing and you want to pay attention to what your needs are actually and your perspective, uh, your perspective is actually, you won't do it because your plumbing won't allow it, right? So the work we do with actors is to help them undo all of that wiring, that plumbing, that architecture, that programming, that education, so that you can feel like yourself again, so that you can actually be you in your unique way, feel what you feel, perceive what you perceive, bring the life that only you have in your veins. And that way you feel fulfilled. You don't have to push. You don't have to focus on the emotion because you're actually being the character, living the character as you would live it, and you're pursuing what your character's needs are rather than trying to pursue the emotion, which is your ego, right? It has nothing to do with your artist. So we help actors undo all that so that you can not be in your ego, not in the people pleasing, not trying to satisfy any authority, but just actually being a sovereign artist, your own authority, and living the scene like you want to live it. That makes sense for you, right? So I hope this makes sense. If it does, if it resonates, if this is what you feel 
you know, is the work that you want to do, stay in touch with us. Send us a, a DM in the comments, a comment on YouTube. Um, if you're on Facebook, um, you can do, uh, or on Instagram, you can send us an, um, an inst a direct message. Sorry. In Instagram, you also have a link in the bio where we have a free training that's called Facebook, you have an about great that will already help you take that first step into undoing all of this and really getting back into your truth. If you know that this is the work you have been missing doing and that you want to do as an artist and that makes sense for you get in touch with us again send us a dm and we'll get in touch with you and we'll tell you everything um about our um reset program all right thank you guys nice to see you bye happy birthday claude i'll call you